one of my most viewed and I think most resonating pieces I've written in some time went up last week about the science of game design and discussing why there needs to be an analytical field for breaking down and examining video games and their gameplay loops. So for this week's critical thought, I want to expand on this and talk about why this is a necessity and what happens when developers don't pay attention to this and the kinds of games we get as a consequence. I'll include a link to the post on Medium somewhere in these corners right now. But for those of you who've been watching the channel and probably have watched a few critical thoughts, you know that I tend to talk at length about game design and systems here. And for the longest time, I've been advocating for a greater discussion on game design and game mechanics. And I think with the post from last week kind of cements this idea that there really should be a formal or maybe like more of a professional look at game analysis. And when I think about this, it makes sense considering just how long the game industry has been around for, and more importantly, that design is its own unique element. Game development is not the same as game design. And when we see developers who don't pay attention to design as its own credible field or studying it, it can lead to games just not working. And I'll talk more about that later on in this video. But what I want to discuss really fast is what happens when we don't see a study of design. Because a lot of people will assume that I'm talking about, oh, you can only make a game if you are the top 50th player in the world at it. But the role of a game designer is that you need to be able to study a genre and understand what are the core game, what are the core gameplay loops I want to make use of, what kind of systems and mechanics, progression curves, UI, UX, and you have to build content around all those elements. And if you're able to do that and do it in a way that works, well then you can call yourself a game designer. But game designer is one of those titles that a lot of people will throw it around that you know anyone can be a game designer. But what we have seen, unfortunately, is that that is very much not the case. There are plenty of platformers. There are plenty of Metroidvanias like Hollow Knight out there. But there's only one Hollow Knight, and it did incredibly well. And there are plenty of others that most certainly did not. And when you can study a genre and break down what works, what doesn't, and why do people play this in the first place... It allows you to start thinking about gameplay at a higher level compared to other people. And what we've seen more often than not when developers don't think about design is one of two kinds of games. And as a heads up, I know a few of you are working on games just like this right now. So you may start to feel like this burning, stabbing sensation like right here in your chest. And that's perfectly normal. I'm not apologizing for it, I'm just letting you know what's about to happen. So the first kind of game is what we've dubbed kind of the programmer's game. This is a game that is developed by somebody who is a programmer first. Oftentimes they are incredibly brilliant and really great at programming. The game could very well be designed on either a custom engine or heavily modifying elements of Unity, Unreal, or whatever. And so what we have here is a mechanically deep game, oftentimes some of the most complicated and just structurally immense gameplay loops you can imagine. If this was like a roguelike, they could procedurally generate characters down to their individual genomes. It's something amazing, you've never seen anything like it before. And then when you go to play it, it is horrible from a UI UX standpoint. Windows just full of text all over the place. There might not even be a tutorial. If you're lucky to get one, it is of the most unintuitive and unhelpful varieties. You know, windows of text that just say, click here, now click here, now click this. You're done, now play my game. The entire game may also be very poor to look at. No real eye or thought given to aesthetics or the general UX of playing this game. And what happens is people load it up, they'll go, nope, 
uninstall it and refund it. So the second kind, which I'm sure most of you watching or know what that's going to be, is the art game. This is a game that has an emotionally gripping story. It is, you know, you can tell somebody put a lot into this. It's going to be resonating and beautiful with amazing aesthetics and art. And when you go to play it, the UI and UX are terrible again. There is no thought to the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay. It is annoying and clunky to control these characters. The UI may be made up of the, all these weird esoteric symbols. There is nothing, no thought really given to how somebody plays this game. It's a game where the experience is about experiencing the game and not playing the game. Or another way of putting it, it's a game that forgets it wants to be a video game. And you'll have examples that are like these massive open worlds, you know, giant game spaces to explore. There's like five to ten minutes of walking from one point of interest to the next. And there is nothing else to do in the space. It is all just empty space there to make the world look bigger than it is. And... Any kind of actual gameplay in it is usually kept to the bare minimum, if there is any. And it's a game that, again, you're, it's more about experiencing what it's like not to play the game. So here's what ends up happening. To the friends and family and you know other developers who play it, they're going to play it, not offer any criticisms or concerns, declare one of the best games of all time, the consumer gets in their hands, spends 5-10 minutes realizing this is what I'm going to be doing for the next 5-10 to 10 hours. They're going to say, nope, uninstall and refund. And both those extremes, most often the developer will have no idea why their game succeeded or failed. And this is a very important point about why there needs to be someone on the team who gets design. Because it's very hard to understand from the outside why a game succeeds or fails. I wonder if studios like Nintendo or Blizzard had like almost like game design audits, audits about you know what their games did right, what they did wrong, you know what they could improve on. One of my favorite parts when I was reading Game Developer magazine were the game post morums, where developers took a hard look at what they did right and wrong. Now, of course, we have the uh, GDC des Failure Design Workshop, which I think is a very great thing to have. But the idea of examining gameplay, I still feel is lost on a lot of people, from consumers to journalists to even other developers. And what often ends up happening is that if you don't understand the design of something, if you try to emulate it, or even just try to supersede it in some way, you end up making a worse product. We've seen this with the FTL clones, with the Darkest Dungeon clones, with the World of Warcraft clones, with the Grand Theft Auto clones, with the Mario clones, and I can just keep going backwards and counting as I keep talking here. But the point is, if you don't understand why any of this works or doesn't work, you're not really going to learn as a designer. And a major part of the evolution of video games has been learning and building off of what came before it. You don't magically go from Super Mario to Hollow Knight. You have to see the whole evolution of the genre, what works, what doesn't work, and grow from there. And a lot of people tend to, I think, ignore or don't understand the amount of work that goes on behind the scenes to make something like Hollow Knight stand out. Again, Hollow Knight from a mechanical standpoint is not that deep of an experience. Nowhere near as deep as something like a 4X or Grand Strategy game. But making something streamlined, making it easy to understand and enjoyable for a wide audience, that is hard to do. And a lot of people, again, they'll say, you know, who cares about casual fans? Who cares about Plants vs. Zombies or Mario or Diablo or any game that achieves, you know, mass success? But if you don't understand what they did right and what they did wrong, you're not going to improve at all. 
So when we, we're going to take a quick break here. And when I come back, I want to talk about more about why this is important to understand. And we're not going to switch any game footage for this one because we need to be, I guess, in serious time. Because there's a lot to unpack about why this is important and what happens if you don't understand this. And if you want to know more about my thoughts on design, especially on platformers, roguelikes, and coming soon horror, then check these books out. For entry-level students, we have 20 Essential Games to Study, and then the Game Design Deep Dive series that takes an extensive look at different genres with horror coming by the end of 2021. As I said in the last part, that... When a lot of people think about game design, they're not necessarily thinking about it at the level that what we talk about here on the channel. And I think that's kind of where a lot of these problems stem from. That for the longest time, when we say the idea of studying gameplay or offering consulting on that, people will automatically go to the idea guy. You know, the, I walk into the studio, here's my million dollar idea for a game, Give me $5 million for it, I'm done. But I do feel, and I talk about this in my library and school talks, that there's going to be this growing understanding for having someone as a design consultant or somebody who understands that there is a greater thought and topic to game design and gameplay as much as understanding how to program a game or do the art and aesthetics for it. And... I don't think we're quite there yet. Maybe I'll be the first one to be recognized like that. Who knows? But if you don't if you don't understand this or you choose to ignore it, you are hurting your game. It doesn't matter if it's the most brilliantly bug-free, you know, coded game of all time or the most beautiful, artistic, aesthetically pleasing game. At the end of the day, a video game has to be played. And if your game is not enjoyable to be played, nothing else really matters. Even if you get, you know, credits and accolades and, you know, other developers want to high-five you and say your game is amazing. Because I see this among developers that whenever I say that there's issues with a game or I try to bring up that, you know, game didn't do well, they'll try and defend it or they'll, you know, try and wiggle around the issues at play here. And as I've said many times over, when I spot problems with a game, they're not hard to find, they're not mysterious, and they're most certainly not magical. And when you have somebody like me looking at your game, there's a reason why I take you know the uh, Eye of Sauron approach or just scanning the gameplay of it. Because consumers don't care if your game is bug-free. They don't care that this game is based off a story a dead relative told you many years ago that has been stuck in your head. They care about what's on that store page and the game that's in their hand. And if they're not enjoying it, nothing else is really going to help you. I remember an interview that I did with the developer of this game, a bit shifter, and they said that Video games or game development is like the intersection of entertainment and programming. And I would now argue that it's the intersection of entertainment or gameplay, programming, and art. And if you don't have all three of those aspects on track, the chance of your game to do well nosedives. We've used the analogy of Russian roulette a lot here on this channel. And game design is very risky. It is like playing Russian Roulette, but not with a six-shooter, but with like a thousand-round Gatling gun. And every time you do something right, you take one bullet out of that chamber. And the scary part is that you can do literally everything right within your power. Take out 999 of those bullets, and that one bullet's still going to hit you and your game loses. Conversely, you'll have people who did nothing right, have 999 bullets in the chamber, and every single one the misses. And the problem, like I said in the last part, very few people in this industry can sit down and have an analytical talk about design. Why something worked, why something didn't work. And if you don't understand these things, 
it leads to more risks with game design. As we've said, there's a reason why companies like Nintendo and Past Blizzard have done so well. They understand at the underlying layer that systems and gameplay matter. People don't complain that Mario doesn't, or they shouldn't complain, that Mario doesn't have a Game of Thrones massive epic story to it, when the jumping is good. You can enjoy a Mario game with just literally Mario running around an empty field and pressing the A button. And when I say that, a lot of people don't understand that idea. That if I just press A on my gamepad here, I should be enjoying that. I shouldn't have to care about the art of your game or what's going on story-wise. If I press a button, there should be a smile on my face when something's happening on screen. And that is exponentially, exponentially far more difficult than what I put it. And it's why I said in my piece that for the indie developers who do make something amazing gameplay-wise, it can often be equal or greater than the titles we see at major companies. Because if they can understand, again, at the fundamental level, what the core gameplay loop is and how to make that work, it can lead to some fantastic titles. And when you don't understand that, it leads to games that fail, and a lot of people are just left scratching their heads wondering why this game didn't do well. And again, we can certainly talk about marketing a game, you know, when did I release the game? Did I release at the wrong time? Did I get a YouTuber to cover it, etc., etc.? But more often than not, those issues are symptoms of an underlying cause that have to do with the game itself, how the game looks, how it plays. And when you don't get those things right, no amount of marketing or YouTubers or, you know, ad revenue that you put out there is going to help that game. And this is why I harp so much on what your core gameplay loop is in the UI and UX of a title. Because if you can't, if you don't get those right, nothing else that you attach to your game is going to make it marketable. And... It's something I think, again, a lot of developers don't want to hear. There are people who just say, just keep making video games and you'll eventually succeed. If you just keep working on the same design loop and just keep repeating the same thing over and over again, surely one of those titles will strike gold, right? It really doesn't happen that way. And I can certainly sit down and play like a massively popular game and point out what that game did right. Just like so I can play a horrible game and figure out why this isn't working. And like I said, when you've reached the point like I have and like a few of you watching this who can analyze design, this stuff becomes almost second nature. It's, it's as easy for me to talk about design as it is to breathe. But you have to train yourself and you have to be kind of like taught to do that. I was thinking about maybe even submitting like a GDC talk or something about, you know, what would be the science of game design? What would be a kind of the formal study of it? Excuse me, and I'm still not sure how I want to approach that one yet. But to end our video for today on, it is important to understand game design. It is not a waste of time. It's not just you coming up with funny ideas and sharing with your friends and family. It is about trying to figure out what makes this game work? And for people who do this right, and they pair that with amazing aesthetics, they're going to have phenomenal titles. And when they don't, they're going to, again, be left wondering, why is my game not selling? You know, I just copied Darkest Dungeon. Why isn't it doing anywhere near Darkest Dungeon's number? Or FTL, or all the other games we've mentioned. So, what do you think? Do you think there should be a formal study, and how will we even start something along these lines? Let me know in the comments below. As always, check out our Discord and Patreon link down below. And if you'd like to support the channel, we're trying to get more content available. Come back for daily discussions on design here and on game wisdom, where he's in the art and science of games. And until next time, take care.